Welcome back. So today I'm gonna be sharing with you how I do my makeup in the winter time and products that I've been really enjoying this um, winter season. So I have like, you know, normal kind of combo, can lean oily sometimes, but um, El Nino is a thing this year. And El Nino has made it not as, you know, wet here in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, I have been finding that my skin is pretty dry right now. So this is how I've been doing my makeup to make sure I'm not looking all crusty. You know, having a nice dewy complexion. Like, this is what we've been doing. And uh, if you like this look, then just keep on watching. You know, I think I like this better than sitting over there. I feel like that color, the way it reflects the light, it's really stark. Like everything looks really like washed out and bright, you know? And I feel like you can really see like my skin and colors of things better. Yeah, we'll stay here. Okay, winter skin. I have my brows done. Brows are on. I've been into a more like sculpted brow lately. I go through these phases with it. Sometimes I don't do anything to my brows, but lately I've been really liking. Uh, anyway, I only have skincare on, so I'm gonna prep my skin, prime it with something glowy. I have like normal to combination oily kind of skin, but it has been a little bit drier than normal here. So, I've been really going in with the glow. This is the Auric Glow Lust. I have this in the shade Selenite. I'm just gonna take one-ish pump onto this very dirty foundation brush and dibby dab onto the high points of my face. This has a lot of skincare ingredients in it, so it's really nice to set that base for a glow, or it's really nice for um, a glowy, glowy hydrated base. And so with this, and this is um, kind of like a little makeup artist trick. So taking a glowy primer or highlighter underneath your base products into the hollows of your eyes to help reflect light your under eyes will appear more awake. I actually saw, oh God, what's her name from RMS doing this with her new, I think it's called, oh, I can't remember, but it's a, it's, a, it's kind of the same formula as their powder blushes, their big powder blushes, but it's a highlighter. I saw her using that underneath her eyes and I was like, she knows, she does it too. Selenite kind of leans a little peach on me in the winter, but once I start really working it into the skin, it blends in just fine. So I'm gonna take this rose ink brush. This is their concealer dual ended brush. This is the number four. It's one of my favorites because it has this kind of paddly one. And I find it's really good for getting concealer in like more teeny tiny little places or spot concealing. But then it has like my favorite type of concealer brush, which is densely packed floofy. I find that it blends out very beautifully. So I'm going to take the Westman Atelier Vital, Vit Vital Skin Foundation <laughs> Stick. I have this in the shade uh, Atelier 0.5. It's a fair neutral shade, which is a little light for me, but I find when it's mixing with the kind of beigey peachness of the Auric Glow Lust in the shade Selenite, they mix together and they make like a really nice skin match. So I'm just taking this so I don't take too much product because I don't wanna just swipe this onto my skin, you know? Cause that's just, you know, gonna take you into possible too much product, getting cakey. And especially if your skin's dry, like my skin isn't dry, but it's drier than it normally is because of the season. You don't wanna to put too much product onto your face when your skin is behaving that way. I'm just working that in. And then 
you know, just very ever so lightly adding more when I need it. The idea is to just like even out your complexion without adding too much product. So I was using my Nude Gasm palette as my mirror. I dropped it and I caught it and like look at the gouge in that highlighter now. It's all under my nail. Anyways, so you can use this type of combination. Where are you at? You can use this kind of combination with a plethora of different products. Um, I like to use it personally with the Hollywood Flawless Filter and other um, concealing products and or foundations. Um, another good trick is if you find something too dry for your winter skin, is just cutting it with a little bit of moisturizer, like making a little tinted moisturizer moment. And that is another tip and trick for winter perfect complexion, okay? I have a bruise on my face right here. Um, and I have no idea what I did. It's very strange. So bronzing in the winter can be weird. My favorite is to take a, like a matte cream bronzer. And uh, if you're on the more like fair slash pink leaning or neutral side, um, finding a bronzer that has like a rosy kind of tint to it. Um, I don't mind bronzers like that. I actually prefer a lot of red in my bronzer when I'm more tan, but when I'm more fair like I am now, I like to have like a, a yellowy neutral kind of color. This is the NARS Laguna Cream blah, 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 blah. This is the NARS Cream Laguna bronzer, and this is in the shade Laguna 01. And this is a really pigmented, but like beautifully formulated product. It has a scent to it. It smells like um, tropical something, like sunscreen almost. Um, or coconut, it's like a pina colada in a way. Anyway, um, I like to take this and instead of just going boop onto my face, I like to take it into my hand like so. So that way I'm not putting too much product and then it looking like weird. You know what I mean? Like I think that if you're ever unsure about how something's gonna perform, doing this technique will help you out. I like to do it with a lot of powder blushes that I have as well. He is thin, light layers so that you don't look just like there's just too much on your face because that is, you know, not dry skin friendly. I love this formula. I think it's so cosmetically elegant. If there was one thing I would change, I would get rid of the scent, but I think it's so, so good. And the colors are really, really good too. This is my one of my favorite in the winter time. Because it's, it's like perfectly like warming, like it gives like life back to my skin, but it's also like chiseling too. It's like that perfect neutral for my undertones. So if you're a similar skin tone to me, like if you have a lot of green to your skin, um, a good way to kind of brighten and freshen your makeup look is to add some type of like cool leaning rose shade or a mauve because on all of skin tones, those colors will brighten and act more like that cool tone pink that's really trendy right now. Um, but I find when someone who has an olive leaning skin tone wears a cool tone pink or like a, one of those like hot, like brighter pinks, it, it doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look as good as it could. You know what I mean? And I think the desired effect is a is found in colors like this. I am doing what I like to call the Patrick Ta method where you take the powder and then put the cream on top of it to add a little more, you know, shine or um, pigmentation. So first I'm gonna go in with the uh, Dior Rosy Glow in the shade Rosewood. And I think that this is a perfect blush for the winter time. I love this formula so much. It goes on in like these really thin veils of color and it just blends and blurs and it's just so lovely. It's so, so lovely. And it's really, really effortless. Like I don't really have to pay attention or um, be afraid that I'm adding too much. 
And you know, I could honestly just stop right there, but I'm not. Next, I'm gonna take the Rowan Cream Blush. This is in the shade Natural Rose. This is a nice um, kind of like sheer balmy formula, but it has a, unlike a lot of balm cream blushes, this does have really nice staying powder, powder, staying power. And even though it's sheer, it does give you like this really lovely wash of rosy color that does translate more pink on my skin. I also like to take the um, a Pew Jelly, Jelly Pang, Juicy, Juicy Pang Jelly Blush, I think it's called. Um, and they have a really lovely, like kind of warm rose shade that I like to use as well. And that's, that's more of an affordable product. It's like gives a little more life, a little more like dimensionality. I actually um, kind of forgot about this blush, but I've been reaching for it again. And you know, it's still, it's still good. The brush that I applied my Auric Glow Lust with, there's gonna be like, a, you know, just a little bit of product left, or at least just like the emollients, you know? And I'm just gonna clean up like the jawline Make sure everything is all blended together. Kind of take it in here and make sure the blush isn't coming in too far. Kind of swipe it. Make sure everything, just like little extra layer of hydration. Uh, yeah, I think that looks really good. Yeah, this has kind of been my like go-to getting ready for work, leaving the house kind of makeup where I don't really have to think about it because I know that my skin is gonna look hydrated and good. Yeah, moving on to eyes. I'm really excited to talk about this because I haven't used it on my channel yet. This is the Armani Beauty Eye Fluid. I think they're just called the Eye Tint, eye, or Eye Tint. This is in the shade 11S. It's kind of this um, taupey, but has this pinky rose gold shift to it um, and it blends out just so natural and lovely. If you were telling me that I would deem a cool toned taupe with a, a rose gold pinky shift to it as like a natural looking everyday shadow for me, I'd be like, you're crazy. Um, but the way this blends out, it's just kind of like a contour one and done, but real pretty. And I find that this blends out um, just as easily with your fingers as it does with a brush. So either or, doesn't really matter. I feel like this lighting is gonna really pick up the pink in it, which is good because the pink shift in this is really, really pretty. And I've experimented with this in a number of different ways, like amount-wise, amount on the eyes. And in the end, it all blends out really beautifully. So it's really hard to overdo this product. It's very subtle and very lovely. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for in a luxury makeup formula. I also have um, another shade in this. It's kind of like an iridescent champagne gold. And it's a beautiful wet looking one and done. Add a little bit more to this eye. And I found that layering these, beautiful. They don't pick up on themselves. So good. It's just like my eyelids, but better with just like, and in this light you can really see the pink. I don't know if the camera is picking up so much, but. Yeah, so pretty. Give my eyes a little bit more, you know, sparkly. I'm gonna go in with the Dior um, Soft Cashmere palette. I'm gonna take the little sparkly topper here because it has this ever so slight pink shift to it. I'm gonna try, I've never used one of these little spongy things in this palette before. I wanna see how it does. Eh. Let's use my finger. I don't know who I was kidding. Yeah. I'm just, I like to take that on top. You can do this with any kind of glittery topper. 
but I like this one in particular because it does have a little bit of like a pink, pink shift to it. I like to really concentrate it in the inner corner too. Ooh, fun. I'm not going anywhere today, so I'm gonna use this uh, Lash Lift by Finding Ferdinand. I got this a little bit ago. And I don't know, when I first used it, I was like, oh, this is nice, but I don't know how I feel about it. And so I haven't been reaching for it because I have found that it can get kind of clumpy on me or even like make my eyelashes look smaller, which is very strange because most mascaras just, you know, they, they, they work out for me because I am kind of gifted in the lash department. But I don't know, I don't know. I, I just keep saying to myself that I'm, I'm not like wowed by this anymore. As I say that, like it did apply really nicely. This is a tubing formula, which if you're not new here, then you know, I do like myself a nice tubing formula because of how thick my lashes are. But this one, I don't know. I'm still, let's try this eyelash or what? Let's try this eye. It is starting to get a little drier, which maybe is what I just needed to wait for it to do to like it more. Yeah, this one's starting to do that like weird clumpy thing. Yeah, still can't figure out. I don't think this is gonna be a repurchase, but it's not terrible. It's just like, I'm just kind of like, mm. Moving on to lips, I'm gonna take the um, Victoria Beckham Lip Definer. This is in the shade two. And it's a nice like kind of brownie pink neutral. It's kind of like my lips, but better. And to finish off the lips, I'm gonna take the Summer Fridays um, Lip Butter Balm. I just have this in the shade uh, Vanilla, which is just like a clear clear little moment because my lips have been pretty dry, pretty gross. So I haven't been able to really enjoy a lot of my lip products lately because of how dry my lips are this winter season. Something that's nice about this is that it's thick, but it's not like too thick, you know? Which, I mean, there's there's no such thing as, like, too thick of a lip balm for me. Like, I don't mind that. But this is just, like, easy and nice. And it feels nice. You know, it lasts a long time. And it's easy. You don't really have to think about it. Okay, that's it. That's how I've been doing my makeup this uh, cold, cold winter season. And, uh, yeah, I find that I tend to go towards more hydrating, glossy. Which, I mean, who am I kidding? I'm like that all year. But, you know, this is how I do it when it's winter. Okay, and so that's it. And I hope you enjoyed slash learned something. Like, comment, subscribe, ask me questions. Tell me what you really like to use in the winter. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!